I'm. Oh, hey. Well, hello. <laughs> well, hello, everyone. We are live right now. <laughs> we just been hanging out in the green room with our representatives from Flame Tree, Nick and Maria. So thank you, big time thank you to Flame Tree for having us. Um, we just want to give a shout out to people hanging out. Um, I see Ross, what's up? And Janelle, hey Janelle. Hello, <laughs> and Ross and Janelle. I guess I should introduce ourselves, yes? Might as well, yeah. <laughs> that's that's something people do when they're I think it is, yeah. on the show. Yeah. Um, so my name is Sadie Hartman. Sometimes people call me Mother Horror. Um, I review horror for Scream Magazine and Mystery and Suspense Magazine and Lit Reactor, Tor Night Fire, wherever people will pay me for reviews. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I also am the co-owner of the horror subscription company Nightworms, so you can check us out on social media if you're interested in getting horror delivered to your door so you don't have to go out and get it, mm -hmm. which is helpful in a pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and with me today is Jonathan Jans, prolific mega horror author, <laughs> Jonathan Jans. Hello, everybody. It's wonderful to be here. It's especially awesome to be here with Sadie. Uh, Sadie is too humble to say it. Sadie's just like a rock star. And uh, Nightworms is amazing. Uh, Sadie has absolutely just blown the roof off of horror over the last couple of years. So it is. And, and aside from that, Sadie actually happens to be a really cool person. So you know, I think that's a, that's a that's a major bonus, right? It's like you can actually be happy for Sadie's success. You know, <laughs> to, to kind of stare at her, at her resentfully from afar. So yeah, Sadie, I amazing. try not to be gar a garbage person. <laughs> you are the opposite of a garbage person. Thank you so much. So so are you? Most 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 of the time. Most of the time, mm -hmm. publicly. Publicly, privately, <laughs> I am awful. I'm terrible. <laughs> Yes. Yes. In real life, nobody talks to me. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> I don't really hang out with a lot of people other than my family, and they have to hang out with me in real life. So maybe I am worse in private than I thought. Yeah. I mean, so here's the thing. For for us in our community, our horror community on Twitter, like those are really the only people in my actual life who are that interested in horror. Like, you know, my husband shout out to my husband is a rock star because he builds my bookcases and he deals with packages coming in every single day. Um, but there's no one to talk horror with nonstop, like the stuff I'm reading. So yeah, the horror community on Twitter is the outlet. What do you think? A hundred percent. I'm totally that way. There is a moment in the office. You ever watch the office? Yes. I know all the offices. Okay. So there's a great moment where um, Angela, you know, she's, she has her cats and uh, one of the cat's name is, I think it's Sprinkles. And Sprinkles? I think it's, yeah, and I think it's after Sprinkles dies, and it's later proven that Dwight killed Sprinkles. But anyway, <laughs> somebody asks her, I think it's Andy maybe, asks her about Sprinkles, and she she like kind of does this double take, and she says, thank you for asking. Nobody oh, asked. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. during one of those during one of those like talking head parts. She says yeah. that, and that's my reaction every time somebody in real life asks me about horror or writing or my books or anything because it so rarely happens yeah it feels rare so it's like I, I almost do a double i'm like oh thank you for asking i appreciate that i am working on something as a matter of fact i am also a writer as well as a teacher but in my real life that's all they know me as is a teacher and the dad of all these kids yeah yeah and it's so nice to have people who actually like horror too because that's a rare occasion you it know is. like I'll tell people, well, they'll ask me, you know, what, well, what do you do for a living? Oh, I review books. Oh, okay, cool. And I'm like, and I have a book company that, you know, does the subscription service. Oh, that's so cool. And they get like all ready to recommend it to their friends. What do you send? I'm like, horror, <laughs> horror books. They're like, oh, <laughs> cool. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. there's something wrong with you. You're probably a sicko. Seriously, that's so so the moment I'm sorry to keep going off the rails here, but in Finding Nemo, when Marlin tries to tell a joke and all the aquatic creatures, their faces start to fall when they realize that he can't tell a joke even though he's a clownfish. That's the reaction I get with horror. Only it's a little faster, it's not quite as gradual, right? Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. You know, it's like an immediate, like they I think they immediately associate horror with like gross, stabby, slasher, gory stuff. Yeah, there must be something a little bit wrong with you. Like yeah, you must be in psycho. some way. Absolutely. Totally yeah. get that. <laughs> Speaking of psychos, like look at how many books this dude's written. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I thought you were gonna say, Sadie, when you said what? speak of psychos, because Eric LaRocca just showed up over here. Oh, hi, Eric. Mark. I thought that was Eric's introduction. <laughs> Speaking of psychos. <laughs> um, no. And a lot of people have shown up. Hello, everybody. Um, hello to all of you. You're amazing. Um, but yes, yeah, I've written a few there. Thank you for having them, Sadie. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's good that, that Eric is here because we're definitely going to be mentioning him since we're going to be talking about horror right. and horror fiction tonight, today. Only disparagingly, though. Like, everything we're going to say is going to be really negative about Eric. Yeah, he's exactly. Not, he's not and doing all, great and all the books we recommend, you shouldn't read, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. yeah, no no one's read Eric's novella or his new short story collection, so we've got nothing good to say about it. Right, exactly. I thought that we should recap, actually, because this um, creepy carnival that Flame Tree has put on, um, they've had videos going on all hollow week um and we're just the what did they what did nick call it peak halloween <laughs> we're like so, yeah. the devil's night video so yeah. so i think originally the very first well some of the other ones i don't know how they were in order so you can go back and watch these but there was the art of the short story um a panel talked about creature creation a panel talked about turning the everyday stuff into horror, um, horror in space, which I definitely am going to go back and watch horror in space because I don't know enough about horror in space. Mm, right? And yeah. I love Alien. Yeah, yeah. You I know. think they probably had Anne Tibbetts, I'm going to guess, on for that. Um, she wrote a really awesome sci-fi novel that I got a chance to read. Um, so anyway, go ahead. You're doing, you're, you're saying important things. <laughs> I'm doing my thing. We, I'm just back, we should go back and just kind of like t touch on some of these because they're fun topics. Um, there was a video about final girl tropes, which I thought would be really fun. I mm -hmm. love final girl stuff. Yeah. Um, and then yesterday, I think, or earlier today, there was Foundations in Horror, uh, Lovecraft and Bram Stoker stuff with uh, Ramsey Campbell and um, the author's last name, Joshi. Yeah, J-O-S-H-I. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. S-T something, but it's Ramsey Campbell. That, that's all really honestly that matters. Ramsey. <laughs> Ramsey Campbell is a, a total legend. Love that guy. Totally influenced, still influences me. S-T Joshi. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, we knew it was an abbreviated first part of the name there. Right, right. Right. Um, so of those topics, Jonathan, which do you think you could talk about for like 10 minutes? Wow. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you mean like continuous monologue style? Uh, probably <laughs> Ramsey Campbell. Like by himself, I could talk about quite a bit. I don't know. What I do just love it. Well, rec recommend some stuff. Like, I think, so everyone who's just kind of watching this video or if you're going to watch this video, like, have a pen and paper handy because we're going to throw down some horror titles that you're going to want to read. Absolutely. Well, okay, so let's, let's just start with Ramsey, all right? Yeah, because, yeah. Here's the thing. It's like I love to recommend new writers, um, and I love it when somebody bursts on the scene, and I, it's awesome. It's like it injects new energy into the genre, and that's one of the many reasons you and I have talked at length about this. The, the, it, it is, I think you use the word renaissance. I mean, horror has always had great writers. It's always had great books, but it just feels like now more than ever, it is absolutely just exploding and rocking. Um, it, but I, what I don't want to do is to forget about all those who have kind of been here all along. 
you mm. know, the, the guys like obviously Stephen King. I'm sure we'll talk about him. Right. But, but you know, people like Joe Lansdale, who doesn't always yeah. write horror, but it's always kind of horror adjacent. Um, and Ramsey Campbell is one of those people. Tanana Reeve Do is another one that I don't want. Tanana Reeve isn't new, but 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 her stuff is just absolutely essential reading for horror. And yeah. she's still doing amazing work, and, and 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 she's got so many more great years ahead of her. So you know, but, but that's not a brand new name. And I want to make sure that I, I also recommend people who have who have been doing it for a little while. But um, Ramsey Campbell, I, I discovered him back in college. Stephen King's Dance Macabre. Uh, the nonfiction book. He had a um, an appendix in the back of like a hundred essential books from 1930 to 1980, and I worked my way through a lot of those, like in college and my early adulthood. And one of the writers that was in there was Ramsey Campbell, and uh, it was the Parasite, the Doll Who Ate His Mother, uh, um, the Face That Must Die, and Demons by Daylight. I think those were the four, and those four books just rocked my world, and they they continue to influence me. And, and and the stuff he writes now is just as good. Like the guy is just there. We go, right? His stuff is just amazing and timeless. And he, Josh Mallerman, said this. I think about Joe Lansdale the other day. But it's like you are the genre. And I feel like with Ramsey Campbell, that certainly I guess it can apply to any writer. And it's a great way for a writer to approach things. But Campbell writes like nobody else does. Nobody does quiet horror quite like he does. Charles L. Grant did it beautifully. Other people have done it beautifully. But nobody does it like Ramsey Campbell. All right, you go ahead. That's a great plug. I mean, I, I've read a few. I've read, I, well, I pulled up this one. Wait, no, I read this one. Um, and reviewed this one, and I really enjoyed it. And this is the next one. In the and I've series. not read either. I need to. Yeah, and it it um, I mean, if people really enjoy like good character building, um, and just like a a well intricately plotted story, like I know, I know the people who love character driven horror, um, don't worry as much about the plot, um. But an intricate plot sometimes where you can just dive in and have like some really meaty story to jump into um, it w would be these books. Um, you know, there's there's like a cosmic kind of thing going on. So if you enjoy like cosmic horror, you know, this is like something you want to get into um, and just like Janelle was saying um, she's into like that kind of stuff too we both were like talking about ramsey um so yeah i need to read more though i mean i haven't read any bentley little so if you have recommendations for bentley little books that'd be good for me i feel bad i've only read like two i, I read i read university and i really liked it um, I'm not sure if I've read another. I dug it. I have no reason not to read more. It's just, it's just, and you, this is like your problem. I'm going to describe the biggest problem in your life that I'm aware of. Okay. Too many great books to read. I know. It's ridiculous. Know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, he's, uh, and then you were talking about cosmic. Another name that popped up when you said that <laughs> in my head was Mary San Giovanni. Um, Mary, it's not all she writes, but she can do, she can go in kind of that direction. And Mary writes with such beautiful word choice. Uh, she's a writer to whom I go really to, to just to, there's a, this isn't a universal, but, but one of the writing axioms I share with my students is use, use words that the common reader knows, but the common writer forgets to use. And Mary does that. Mary's word choice is sublime. Um, I love that. Yeah, she's so good. And I, I didn't remind, as, as you were starting to talk about cosmic, you invoked invoked that word. It reminded me a little bit of her. Yeah, no, I I think that that's a really important thing too. Is when an author can surprise you, like you know, and just like you were saying with descriptions and word choices. And oh, John Lynch has some recommendations for us. So write these down. John Lynch is telling us for Bentley Little Rex, the store, Revelation, the Academy and university. Oh yeah. Janelle says the store too. Nice. John coming in hot. That's awesome. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, Thanks you guys. That's no, I mean, there is way too many books. Like right. that's what we, so when I started reading dedicated horror and nothing else, like I, you know, 2017, 2018, I was just doing a season of horror where I would just reserve like September and October for horror. Really? Yeah. And then I was like, 
you know, doing an event on Instagram every year and just being like, hey, here we go, season of horror, let's do this. And every time I would build out my TBR and it would just be this giant stack and I'd be like, I need more time to get through my season of horror. And this is when Ashley started calling me mother horror. And my Instagram handle was Sadie reads them all. And I was like, not reading them all. I was just <laughs> reading horror. So I was like, I need to change my name, A. And B, I need to just read horror. So 2018 was completely dedicated, mostly. 2019 and 20 was all horror, straight horror, not, not anything else. I didn't um, know that. I didn't know because it's like you, like you, I don't know. You're just like, it, it seems to course through your veins. Like that really kind of, it's not a negative thing. It just kind of surprises me a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I've been reading it since I was a child, you know, and right. sneaking it from my mom, but it wasn't like a dedicated thing until 2018. But 19 and 20, and then this year, 2021, has broken the bank. Like, I'm like, you guys should know I had to build bookcases just to keep up with how much books were coming in. And I just, my eyes get like rectangular, square shaped, book shaped. I'm just like, oh, I can't read all these books. I want to though. That is, that's a great problem to have though. And it's partially your husband's problem, it sounds like. But, oh, definitely. But of all problems, that's a pretty wonderful problem. That, to me, that means you're doing it right. Yeah, I mean, that's life done right. And then, you know, we were driving in the car the other day and I had I had a month a month's worth of nightworms downstairs in boxes. Another month that we had pre-ordered had come in. So a month and a half books plus all my own books. And I think we had like more books than a library or a bookstore would have in my actual house. Like, <laughs> wow. yeah, we're talking a couple thousands here. Wow. That is, you know what we need to eventually, Beauty and the Beast, the uh, probably the newer version does it too, but remember Bell's, li or the li the Beast's library? I think eventually that's what your house is going to look like. <laughs> yeah. Right? You're going to walk in with these soaring ceilings. and Yeah, the rolling ladder. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. You're going to have the rolling ladder. You're going to just sweep through like Bell. That's going to be amazing. Yeah. All my kids are going to, when I die, all my kids are just going to be like, what the fuck do we do with all these books? <laughs> <laughs> what does anybody want to read horror for the rest of their lives mom's got books because <laughs> you've got them you've you got them set up man. <laughs> yeah that's awesome so tonight is halloween eve yes do you have plans well i i i was telling you earlier but not not the audience i don't think they weren't there for that part were they I, uh, so I had a birthday earlier this week and I, I used to really like dread birthdays and now for whatever, like a, a flip switched a couple years ago and I started to kind of enjoy them. And so now I want it to last a little longer. So I told, it was a Wednesday night. I think it was a super busy night, super busy day. In addition to all the normal stuff, I'm like, I'm like writing college letters of rec for all my seniors. And, and I, and I'm, I'm getting new ones all the time and they're doing it like November the 1st. So I'm getting more and more. And I had letters to write that night and I have letters to write probably tonight before bed and tomorrow. But anyway, I was just like, I don't want to rush my presents. Can we just save that for Saturday? So we're going to, right after you and I get done, we're going to eat pizza, which my kids hate, but I love. So I'm going to eat pizza tonight. Who and hates pizza? I know. It's like, what happened? What happened to these kids? They seem so amazing. And they are amazing in every other way, except for they hate pizza, which is like the biggest character flaw that I can imagine. So we're That's hilarious. Pizza. Yeah, it's just wild. My wife and I just lament the fact. We don't know what went wrong. We don't know why, but they hate it. Um, and then we're going to open presents. And then I'm probably going to watch... Uh, something with someone like it could be Chernobyl with my wife and son could be a horror movie with one of my daughters could be like a Marvel movie. I don't know. I'll definitely watch a horror movie tomorrow night after trick or treating, but I'm not really sure about tonight. What are you doing on? Are you <laughs> like, by yourself all evening? Like, is your husband coming back later or is he? No. So here's, here's what I, so Halloween Eve is fun because I think that we're going to go to the movies. Like, I'm as well as being a huge horror hound, I'm a major movie buff. Like nice. before pandemic, I was a subscriber to this ticket service at our local cinema and like we were going like at least four times a month. Wow. Going to the movies. Yeah, it's really important to me. Like I 
really enjoy going to the movies. I love that. So post pandemic, you know, we're kind of like working our way back into it. Like I saw the green Knight. We saw the, um, that movie. No, I can't think of the title, but it's the, it's the guy who, you know, is like the quiet dad. And then he like is actually an assassin trying not to be an assassin. Huh. Help me out in the comments. Like the cover is like a fist punching him in the face. Oh no! With uh, the guy from uh, Better Call Saul. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody or Mister Nobody. No, or... Nobody. Nobody. I think nobody. It was. nobody. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I love that. Who's that? Yeah, so we actor? saw that too. That actor is amazing. He just had a heart issue or something. Wow, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like he, everybody was worried about him because anytime somebody trends on Twitter then, you know, you understandably freak out. And he was trending and he he had like a heart thing. And then he came out. What's that actor's name? I love that guy. Bob Odenkirk. Yeah. Well, amazing Thanks to actor. That. Yeah. So, and did you like that movie? It looked, it looked. Yeah, like I loved it. There's actually, there's this whole car chase sequence where like my husband fell asleep because he, he just like gets tired of the movies. But my son and I, he's 15. This car chase, you guys, had like the whole Pat Benatar, um, you know, uh, heartbreaker song. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the whole guitar solo and just this car chase, like, Oh, it was, it was epic. It was That's a really fantastic. good movie. How is green, so green Knight? Green Knight is uh, a 24. Uh, and, I, and it looks really cool and weird. How was green Knight? Yeah. And that was like actually an acquired taste. Like if you like very artfully done slow burn kind of like, really focusing in on like the costumes and the and the cinematography and stuff like <laughs> yeah. you will enjoy it i actually really liked it it's kind of like an actor's movie yeah. um but but yeah it's a little bit slow um but it was beautiful and scrumptious yeah it looks really awesome i want to see it yeah 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 so but speaking of horror like and horror traditions like yeah. do you read on 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 uh, halloween do you read anything Usually I get back into like some classics of the genre around Halloween. Um, I uh, So what book am I reading? I'm reading a, um, a Clive Barker book right now called Cabal. And, and Clive Barker, I think it was maybe the basis for a movie called Nightbreed because they keep talking about the Nightbreed. So I have oh, to okay. that's where the movie came from. And I haven't seen the movie, even though it stars Craig Sheffer, I think, which is very close to my real name anyway. Um so I am going to stop my Clive Barker for a moment, which is really good because Clive Barker is amazing always. But I'm going, and you posted something about Clive Barker recently. Yeah, I what? posted, um, so The Thief of Always is one of my favorite Clive Barker books. Never read it, need to. Yeah, and it's really small. Like you could read it to Peach. Okay. It's really small. It's, yeah. um, you know, a, a one and done. It's got illustrations in it that are really creepy that yeah. I want to say he did himself. Okay. Uh, yeah, and it's just a spooky little tale about a kid that finds, like, this house. I'm not going to say anything more, but it is, like, <laughs> it is creepy. It is, like, um, timeless, and, and there's not really an age group to it. Kind of like the Halloween tree, Ray Bradbury. Yeah, by Bradbury, yeah. I've heard yeah. that. I've heard that it, it's a little, it's, like, the only Barker that's probably also good for younger audiences. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's one of the one of the reviews said. Yeah, no, totally. Yeah. Um, so I'm probably going to interrupt my Barker just so I can go back in time a little bit. And I, I often read like M.R. James um, around that time. Sometimes I, I like last year, I think I read The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Um, I'll read Hawthorne around that time, Al Algernon Blackwood. So I, I really like, I, I love, especially M.R. James. There's something really special about M.R. James's ghost tale or ghost stories. And uh, so it, I'll read like uh, stories, ghost stories of an antiquary and more ghost stories of an antiquary. Um, they never get old to me. They're, they're, they're always like immersive and just, I don't know, the, the guy just knew how to set you up and just scare the pants off you. I, I love, love M.R. James. Oh, wow. I'm going to have to write some of that down. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. Yeah, he's I, I totally recommend novellas. Like I've been reading little novellas, like a, like a short stint that I can do in like two or three hours. Yeah. Like I read yeah. Keelan Patrick Burke's Blanky mm -hmm. on a Halloween night once during a rainstorm, which was perfect. Yeah. Um, you could read Night of the Mannequins by Stephen Graham Jones. I love that book. I just read yeah. that a couple of weeks ago. It was so good. So fun. Like he's oh. the king of slasher books. Like, oh. 
so much fun. And then you could read um, Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke by Eric LaRocca is a quickie. Yes. Um, Goddess of Filth by V. Castro. Um, Benny Rose, The Cannibal King by Haley Piper is set on Halloween night. So that's a fun one. Um, what else off the top of my head? Oh, Nothing But Black and Teeth by Cassandra Kaw is yeah, short. That's a and new Nightfire book, right? That's a tour Nightfire book. Yeah. Um, oh, also, there's a free book by Zin E. Rockland, who did Flowers for the Sea. Um, she just released that, but she has one called The Night Sun that's free on tour.com. That is like, um, just, you just have to read it. Like, you just have to read it. And it's free, so there's no, there's no reason not to. I also think tour.com has uh, Shards by Ian Rogers still up. Okay. Which is the creepiest thing I read this year, I think. One of the creepiest really? things I read, yeah. I've heard yeah. good things about Ian's work. Ian has a, a movie, like something, uh, there's something with Ian that, that Ian has written that's being made into a movie or has been made into a movie. Um, I've been meaning to check out Ian's work. Cassandra Shaw's book as well. That That's one I need to to, to read. Uh, that one, or what's the name again? Nothing But Black and Teeth? Yeah. Nothing yeah, but I've been seeing that everywhere. It looks great. I, I'm I really, um, this is not a novella, but it, you, you just, since you mentioned that, that publisher, this is one that, that, oh my gosh, this one is like just totally haunting me. Um, yeah, we just sent that out in Nightworms. Did you really? Yeah, we did. Well, great taste. Yeah. Um, you mentioned some wonderful novellas. Uh, you mentioned Eric's, which I haven't read. I read his short story collection. It was amazing. It was so good. What was the one you mentioned? Do you remember what you mentioned before, Eric? Because it like got me, I got all fired up and then I forgot what it was. Was it... Uh... Haley Piper's Benny Rose. Haley's at the top of my list to read. I haven't read Haley yet, and I need to. I've heard nothing but wonderful things about Haley's work. It was the one before that. I forget what it was. V V. I need to read. Oh, Goddess of Filth. Yeah, I need to read Goddess of Filth because V's got serious game. V is a, a fantastic writer. I love. Look at this. I've, I've, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I, I I can't wait to check those out. I, I read some of her other work, loved it. And and so Goddess of Filth is near the top of my TBR. I love the way she writes. So good. Yeah, we, she um she did Hairspray and Splitch Blades. Yep. I read that. It was like the first one I read. Yes. And if you like your horror like a little bit spicy and a little yes. bit sexy and sassy, um, you know, really female empowering, yeah. you know, like characters that are just like, I don't know, they just kind of leap off the page. Like Goddess of Filth has like young female protagonists um, coming of age, which is so rare, like most coming of age horror. And I love it. Jonathan Jans wrote Children of the Dark, which is amazing. Um, but we need more girls like girls grow up too. Um, girls ride bikes, girls get into trouble, girls have to deal with a lot of bullshit. So more, more. Yeah, we yeah. need more. Yeah, I, um, mean, no, but they, I think they have to deal with much more than boys do, and boys yeah. have to deal with plenty. But but there is a whole list of things. A whole yeah, like you're saying. I mean, that's those are stories that need to be told, and 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 they are being told, but they need to be uh, boosted more and 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 known about more. Yeah. So I mean, Goddess of Filth. If you're looking for young girls growing up getting into trouble um smashing the patriarch like you know doing some seancey ritualistic stuff that's getting them into trouble <laughs> you definitely <laughs> need to read that that sounds amazing that sounds yeah it's fantastic. amazing yeah and queen of the cicadas is actually really scary um it kind of reminds me of like along the same lines of uh Candyman, which I won't watch because it sounds too scary. <laughs> <laughs> That's the biggest compliment you can give something. That's fantastic. Did you see that? No, not the new one. I, I plan on seeing it soon. Uh, but I, I, we're, yeah, like Peach isn't, I, I love the, just like you, I love the theater with all my heart. Like my heart was so full when you were talking about how love, how much you love, because pre-pandemic, we would go all the time. I don't know about four times a month, but we'd go at least twice, sometimes three times. Um, and I love it. It's like a part of my upbringing, a part of my kids' lives. Yeah. Uh, he, Peach is not vaccinated yet. So I, I get, oh, yeah, I get yeah, yeah. so I get scared because of that. So I, yeah. I would have seen Candyman in the theater. I was kind of waiting for streaming, but they just announced that five through 11 could be vaccinated. So to me, like as soon as I can get Peach done, 
um, that that makes me feel better about doing that more. So I, I'm I'm pumped. I can't wait to go back and see more movies. Yeah, yeah. What do you think? Of, like on that topic, like did horror really uh, come through for you during pandemic worry? Oh yeah, yeah. In every way, I and mean, you know, you talk about the Twitter community. Um, I think that, you know, just like with everything, anything with people, there are going to be flaws. Um, but there are also some really good things about it, too. And I felt like I grew closer to a lot of people, including you, uh, during that time. So that was positive. Um, I know that I know that as a as a reader, my, the, the books that I would read, that would help me. Um, just to just reading in general, I always I don't just say this because I'm a writer and an English teacher, but but the act of reading, it just makes you feel more connected to others. It makes I think it improves your your empathy. It makes you feel more understood because, it, it, you know, you see that other people go through the things that you go through or at least something like it and it makes you more sensitive to what others go through that you don't. But also, like as a writer, it really was, a, it was a really important space for me. Um, it was so important to be able to express as a writer the things that I was feeling. Um, during during the pandemic, like I wrote so much, like Halloween Gods was all yeah. written. That was all written during lockdown. Um, some of the other stuff I've written was, was written during that time. So horror came through for me in every conceivable way during all of this. What yeah, about you? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, did, did it do like, how, how was it for you? I mean, what role did it play in your, in your world? Yeah. I mean, I remember like one specific day in March because Washington, the state of Washington actually was ground zero for the pandemic. The first oh. case of COVID-19 was here in Seattle. Right. And my husband was working like a couple blocks away. Um, he was an elevator technician at the time. Oh, which wow. became like a non-essential job. So he was furloughed for a short time. Um, but just before that, you know, I was finding myself watching too much news. Um, and so to distract myself, I like picked up Hell House by Richard Matheson. Like you guys have to read this book, okay? If you haven't, like it's classic. Like now I know what people are talking about, but I, I picked up that book and I did not put it down. I actually broke my eyeballs. Like the reason why I have glasses, like I just got these subscriptions, like now I can wear glasses. I is because I broke my face basically like reading it. <laughs> I just like didn't put it down. <laughs> I was like, why can't I see? <laughs> because I was reading too hard. <laughs> that is so good. I love Love that book so much. I love that writer so much. Richard Matheson. That's, yeah. And so the people I talked about earlier, like with King and, and Lansdale, you know, it's also important, to, I think, to know our whole heritage. And, and Richard Matheson, my gosh, you can't say enough good about that writer. He right. is, and every time I pick him up, so I teach some of his stories and like Hell House. So that was, I was so King centric as a young reader, like ages 14 through 18, that that is, I'm not exaggerating, that's all I read. I, I didn't read a single book by another author. And yeah. he was the first writer I read. So the first probably 18 or 20 books I read were all Stephen King. And when I finally branched out, it was my freshman year in college. And the first two books that I read, other than Stephen King, were The Haunting of Hill House and Hell House. Those are the first two I read, other by King. Um, and the and in Hell House, my, you talk about two amazing books to read, right? To finally yeah. branch out. And they both just changed me so fundamentally. Um, there are moments in Hell House that are so haunting. There are just, I remember the, the beginning when we start to hear about Hell House, about Emmerich Belasco. And they say, I think that it's like the Mount Everest of haunted houses. And, and I just, I remember, I just got chills when I read that. I just remember being so excited to go into that house. And there's a scene, I, I, I know that we're spoiler free here, but there's a scene, I think there's like a, like this evil chapel kind of place. And I think something like comes yeah. down. Like, oh my gosh. Yeah. It's like, oh my gosh. I can't believe he went there. I can't believe that just happened. Yeah. Uh, there's like a, um, a scene in a sauna too. That really got me. Yeah. Yeah. In the house. Yeah. yeah. So the interesting thing too about like horror writers is I feel like they tap into things 
that you maybe necessarily didn't know that you would be afraid of. But once you read it, yeah. you're like, oh, like, so I read, I got an early copy of Survivor Song by Paul Tremblay. Yeah. yeah. So I read it pre-pandemic and then the pandemic hit. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> so I was like, is Paul Tremblay a prophet? Yeah. I remember people asking him that. They're like, seriously, dude, like, did you, like, when exactly did you write this? How did yeah. you know? Yeah, I remember that was like, I, mean, I think that people still suspect him of that. Yeah, and so yeah. I do want to tie together what the reason why I brought up Paul Tremblay is he has an awesome article or review of Hell House that you might want to check out. Really? Yeah, because, um, you know, like in classic horror, one of the things you really kind of run into are horrible female stereotypes, like lots of um, misogynistic like weird stuff um and just maybe even some like bad bad lbgtq you know representation right. so one of the complaints i kept hearing about hell house was how it had like a bunch of these elements you know and and people were like trigger warning the hell out of that book and i was just like well i like to read stuff for my own self like i'm i'm not gonna just like not read a book because people are saying it has all these like problematic stuff. So I picked it up and honestly, you guys, I was looking for it cause I had already like read about like people saying things about it. I couldn't find it. And then I wrote in my review the same thing. Like I really couldn't find like the complaints that people had. I mean, there's definitely like a, a point for some of it, um, you know, to look at it maybe in a different way. Um, and, and Paul Tremblay's article is really cool. Like he touched on that too. So, okay. um, yeah, check it out. His, yeah. Just Google Paul Tremblay and Hell House. You'll probably find it. Yeah, that's right. That sounds great. I, I'd love to, I will read it for sure. Paul's a great dude. Uh, yeah. we've done some events together and, uh, I'm, I'm sure, I mean, he's, he's always, he's a brilliant writer and I'm sure his thoughts are fantastic. I, I definitely will read that. Yeah. Part yeah. of my, part of yeah. my homework. And, not to discredit, you know, like people's experience, like I'm sure there's stuff in there that was like offensive or just kind of like yeah. problematic for people. But for me personally, like I couldn't find it. So if okay. anybody wants to challenge me on that, like you can DM me and, and let me know. I'm, I'm like all ears. I like to learn about that stuff. But um, I do want people who are watching to know that they can ask questions um, in the comments. And then we can kind of like, you know, tackle that too. We don't want to like monologue about our own stuff all the whole time, but because <laughs> we could definitely do that. <laughs> uh, oh, and you were talking about novellas. One I wanted to mention really fast is this uh, puppy right here. Um, yeah, and it, it's a different kind of novella than some of the ones that you were alluding to. Um, and, uh, it's, it's just some, it's Laurel Hightower in case you can't see that on here. Uh, but it's one of the best novellas I've read in the yeah. last couple of years. Um, Laurel's a fantastic writer and that's a wonderful book. Um, and there are so many other wonderful novellas too, but that was just sitting right there beside me. So I would be remiss if I didn't mention it. Yeah, no, there was like a trifecta of uh, women horror written books uh, last year. There was Dear Laura by uh, um, Gemma Amore and Crossroads by Laurel H Hightower and True Crime by Samantha Kolsnick. Like those three books just kind of like, you know, skyrocketed in popularity last year yeah. and totally with good reason. Like definitely have to pick up all three of those in my opinion yeah no awesome rex wonderful recommendations oh i'm looking at the comments there's just lots of recommendations in the comments which is really good too because i think those will come with the video um you know when this this is watchable later too so we're doing this live now but the whole series is is available to watch um oh ross says I've yet to read you, Jonathan, hangs head in shame. Where is the best part to discover your work? Also, Sadie, where would you recommend to start to? Well, I tell you, I'm going to let you take that because I feel like an utter tool. I just, I'm not good at like, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I don't think it's like, oh, I don't think I have an incredible amount of of like self-deprecation or whatever. I mean, I, I believe in my own work. I'm really proud of it. 
I just always like clam up a little bit when people ask me to what I should recommend of my own work. That's a problem. Yeah. Like that's a pretty important part of being an author. You should be able to, you should have an answer at the ready. Well, you should do this one and this one. And after that, you graduate to this. I don't have any idea what to say when people ask that question, which is really dumb because I have so many books that I've written and so many more coming out. Um, so one thing I should also say, Ross, I need to read you too. Uh, Mallerman says really positive things about you. He loves your work. So I need to read you as well. But hopefully Sadie has, has something to say. <laughs> because I will just like- I do. Off. I actually came prepared. I wrote my Jonathan recommendations right here. Oh, nice. Yeah, and I also have recommendations for Ross's work too. So nice. um, my Jonathan Jan's recommendations are Children of the Dark first. That was my first. It actually started me on like this thirst quest for indie horror because I think you were the first like real indie horror I was like dabbling in. Mm, could have been Beneath by Christy Demeester. It's a tie. Um, we're going to say it was Children of the Dark. Yeah, we're going to say it's Children of the Dark for the sake of the programming here. I beat Christy for, or Kisty by, or by, for one, by one day, Demeester. I need to read uh, Demeester. I've heard wonderful things about that writer. Yeah, she's a, yeah. she's amazing. One of my favorites. Yeah. Um, Exorcist Falls is great if you like really dark possession horror, which I do. Um, the Nightmare Girl is a really strong choice for a first Wolfland, if you like werewolves. The Siren and the Spectre, I think, is my second go-to choice. So if people don't want to read Children of the Dark, I usually recommend The Siren and the Spectre. Also, the hardback is gorgeous. I have to show it. It's got shiny Jansy fans right here. That is, I've got it. And yeah, I just, I didn't do this intentionally, but I've got it right here as well. Yeah. <laughs> it's really pretty, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's a really great cover. Yeah. And it, it deals with like, you know, your favorite tropes. So, you know, this guy, this skeptic who has like a troubled past, troubled love relationship, uh, goes to like a haunted house, a friend's haunted house. And he's just like, yeah, there's nothing going on here. And then there's some like sketchy neighbors that are <laughs> like. <laughs> so sketchy. <laughs> Real sketchy. Oh. Um, yeah, but he gets haunted. Uh, by the house and by some other things. So check that out. Um, and the dark game is kind of like your homage to the haunting of Hill House. Am I right? Like yeah. people invited to a house, you know, there's this like writing contest, but there's also like just some um, sketchy people, <laughs> more sketchy people. I'm noticing a, th a theme here, right? Yeah. A pattern. <laughs> I'm noticing it. Um, and also The Raven is another recommendation. The Raven has like, if you like creature features, this is sort of like Jonathan built like a world of creatures. Um, and people have like this weird DNA gene or something that like can turn you into a monster. <laughs> is that right? Yeah. yeah, that's right. That's amazing. Yeah. So that's cool. And then for Ross, Ross actually has a trilogy. I feel bad about recommending it because it's tied up at Stygian Sky Media right now. We're publishing all three books of Ross's, um, but I'm sure you could probably like get a copy if you wanted to read it from Ross. He could probably hook you up with like a digital copy of um, his first book, Juniper. And it's speaking of novellas, it's a small, quick read. So nice. You definitely have to read it. It's very good. Yeah. Um, there was a question. Now it's gonna go away. So I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna take that description or that 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 I don't know the list that you just gave. I'm gonna bottle it. I'm gonna try <laughs> to have my daughter turn it into a TikTok. I'm gonna try yeah. to. That was amazing. That was so good. How can you be so eloquent about it when I am so clumsy talking about my own work? That was incredible. Thank I, you so much. Okay. Honestly, if I write something down, it sticks in my brain really well. So if I've written a review of something, that sticks my the synopsis is in here. Yeah. Okay. Does that make sense? No, it totally makes sense. You've just you've been so kind to like review so many of my works. I appreciate it so much. And the way you described each one, I'm like, oh yeah, that's so much better than I would have said. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> I, I, I love how you even mentioned the neighbors in Siren and the Spectre. It's like they stumbled out of an Edward Lee novel or something, right? Or yeah, they totally so did. Oh, they're it's really so bad. shocking. 
It's so bad. And yeah, I love, I, I'm, I'm really proud of the book, but it's like anytime people mention them, I just cringe. I'm like, oh, they're so terrible. Like, no. I'm so sorry for them. I feel like I have to apologize for them. No, it's sort of like, um, I don't know if this works. For me, it works. But like in music, sometimes the first time you hear like a favorite band, there's something really annoying about the music that you don't necessarily like at first. Mm -hmm. But then it becomes the thing that you look for in the rest of their music. And the thing about (laughs) your sketchy neighbors is that was the stuff that was like I was like a junkie for at some point. Like as you're reading, you're like, I just want some more of those sketchy neighbors. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's just so wrong, right? It's so weird. It's so bad that you just, you know, for whatever reason, that there's like a craving for it. Yeah, it is every kind of wrong there is. Which is great. <laughs> uh, Jonathan, this is from John Lynch. Jonathan, how did you get started in the horror genre as far as being a published author? How did The Sorrows end up getting picked up for publication? Yeah. So, uh, John, thank you for that question. I was basically between 2004 and 2012 uh, or 2011, somewhere around there. I was rejected by everyone in the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, t- I, t- I tell my students that because I, I think the thing is, like, I love it when I see people um, you know, writing, I, they talk about it on Twitter. I see, I love it when I hear that they got a rejection slip and of course, and I don't love it cause they feel crushed. I love it cause that takes guts. It takes so much guts to try and to try again after you fail. Um, I tell my students that I'm the, I'm the LeBron James of rejection. Um, I have been, I, I got rejected so much and you know, what that did was it made me really work harder. It made me learn more. It made me work smarter and it made me really appreciate everything. Um, you know, I don't think in, in a billion years, I could, att- I'm not going, nobody is ever going to attain Stephen King level um, because there's only one Stephen King and I love him. I love you if you ever watch the Stephen King. Um, thank you so much for making me a reader and a writer and a teacher. Um, but I, um, I could even get to like that level and never even be a bit arrogant or cocky or take it for granted um because it really like totally grounded me uh so every so i I just got rejected by everybody um people say they could wallpaper their their offices with rejections i like i scoff at that i'm like seriously i could wallpaper a city i could wallpaper new york and rejections wow from agents agents publishers people would stop me on the street and just give me rejections randomly um so finally yeah, but you know, at the time it was, but but now I like look back on that so appreciatively and so fondly, um, because I I I you know because some good things have happened. So in two thousand late two thousand eleven, somewhere in two thousand eleven, Don Doria, um, who was starting at another publishing house, he picked me out of the slush, and then in two thousand twelve, um, the Sorrows was published, and I just I've been working very steadily since then. And I, I'm always writing something. I'm always editing one thing and writing another. And that's way more of an answer than you wanted. And I focused on the negative. I focused on the negative just because I don't want to ever sound like, oh, I've done this positive thing or that positive thing. No, um, it's good. That was good. Yeah. Well, thank you. It sounded incoherent. So I'm glad that it sounded better to you. But yeah, yeah I just, yeah. Uh, and I, I just, I, I will always steadily keep working. I will always keep. My favorite quote, John and then Sadie, my favorite quote, and this is like the ultimate cheesy quote, and that's why I love it so much. Um, There's this, uh, it's about a stone cutter, and it says something like this. I'm going to butcher it, but it says, uh, anytime I get discouraged, I go look at the stone cutter at work. I see him hammering away 99 times without so much as a crack showing in the stone. But on the hundredth strike, the stone splits apart. And I know that it wasn't that hundredth hit that did it, but it was all the work that he was doing before. And it's and it's like when you think you're not accomplishing something, when you think you're not making any difference, you are. And I feel like that's life. Like, you know, with our children, most of the time they think that we're idiots and we feel like they hate us. Yeah. And yet we're loving them every day. And every day we're trying to be good parents to them. And I have to think on some level that's sinking in on some level that's making a difference in their lives. And so I look at writing in a similar way. Wow. That was a really good answer. Well, thank you for making me feel good, even if it wasn't. No, it really was. Um, (laughs) Also, wait, there was something I was going to say. 
And then I got lost in that stone cutter quote. That was really cool. I probably yeah, remember. Cool. It'll come back to me. Um, yeah. CS Humble has a question. And first, I just want to shout out. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Um, so Jonathan has like a ton of stuff in the wings, like waiting to be published. He was saying that he's working so hard. Like, I think a lot of your fans are just like standing by waiting for all of it. Cause you have Marla, which I read, like, it feels like eons ago and I love it. Thank <laughs> and, you. You're like, and what? Halloween oh, gods, which is amazing. Halloween and gods. Yes. Amity. Right. Yep. Am I even saying that right? Yeah. Um, and then you have that dismembered or whatever. Dis th that's with cemetery dance. Yeah. Which I'm gonna text Richard Chismar and be like, dee, 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 <laughs> "Where's my, where's my John and Jasmine?" Um, yeah, and then there's more. I'm sure Raven too. Yeah. Children of the Dark too. Yeah, yeah. What the heck? You're just like sitting on a pile of manuscripts at this point. You, I think you just named like six books that I'm <laughs> that I'm done with. Yeah. And then, and You're then crazy. Uh, in Vale, Vale, I'm like 80. I got to the 86,000 word um, part today. Um, that'll be finished probably by the end of winter break. So like early January, I'll finish the rough draft of that. That's my sci-fi horror novel. So I'll have seven books done. Yeah, I, it's 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 really bizarre. Um, but, you know, it's funny about the thing about the dismembered. So you mentioned that one. You told, said you're going <laughs> to text I yourself. am going to. He's a great guy and a great and an amazing writer. Um, but the thing about Cemetery Dance with that, like it's they've had it for a while. But I can't be mad at them because, A, they're always communicative. Like, oh, yeah. you know, like Brian James Freeman, he, he always answers my emails. He's always super nice. Oh, yeah. And, and they paid me all of it. They Like, they paid me my entire advance, like, a couple years ago. So they're like, you know, they paid me early. They paid me earlier than they had to. So they're, like, totally above board, and, and they're awesome. Oh, they yeah, just, totally. They just take a little while, right? They're just, they just you know, they, a while. They yeah, just take a little while, right? So the, yeah. at some point, the dismembered will come out. But um, <laughs> at least they have, you know, they've always communicated. They've already paid me. They paid me earlier than they had to, which is cool. Yeah. Yeah. So well, what I was going to say was C.S. Humble, I just read his book. It's called All of These Subtle De Deceits, or I think I have that title right, All the Subtle Deceits. Um, and it's possession horror, oh. and it's probably one of the best possession horror books I've read since A Head Full of Ghosts, nice. and since I read Exorcist Falls, like, it's right up there with you there, like, it is, yeah. So anyway, he has a question. That's awesome. Um, but write down, see us humble and write down that book, because it's amazing. I will. Um, his question is, Jonathan, which of your books felt like the one where you really come into your own and found your authorial voice? Oh, that's a tough, that's a great one. Okay, so uh, A, I feel like I'm forever discovering it and I feel like it's forever changing and forever, hopefully improving. Um, but I think to, to answer your question a little better, I will say The Nightmare Girl. Um, that book... Uh, and I think the reason why I feel that way is because, and Sadie, you you were kind enough to mention that. The Nightmare Girl was the, yeah, there I love that cover. Um, that was the one where I felt like um, I, I I showed more of myself on the page. Um, that that book has a lot of my heart in it, for better or worse or whatever. But I uh, really was vulnerable in writing that book. It's not that I wasn't vulnerable vulnerable before, but with that book, I really felt like I let my heart show. Um, there's a book. There's a there's a scene at the end of that where um, where Joe, the main character, who's so much like me or a lot like me, he's with his um, child. He's with his daughter, and she actually reassures him in the scene uh, near the end. And that was like this verbatim conversation that I once had because I'm forever feeling like I'm failing my kids my children. I, I'm always feeling inadequate as a father. And um, one of my own children was reassuring me. And um, and I, I just felt like by by expressing my heart in that scene and in that in that character and in that story, I just felt like my voice was more my own with that book. So that was a really important one for my development. Um, so I'm glad you I'm glad you dug it. And I'm glad you mentioned it. Yeah, and I will say too, like, um, 
Jonathan does seem to like write himself a little bit into some of these characters like um just having gotten to know you a little bit i can see probably like there's some autobiographical stuff in children of the dark yes um yes. for your growing up stuff and david crane is that his name or kane kane yeah 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 Yeah, he's there's you wrote yourself into that a little bit <laughs> um also the nightmare girl too yeah. i feel like the main character has a little jams going yeah. on no, absolutely. You mentioned David Kane in Siren and the Spectre. And I think those three, those three books, like Children of the Dark Will has so much of me of me growing up. But like in Siren and the Spectre, there was a scares that care um panel where we were being asked questions and stuff. And I was talking about that. And I didn't even realize that there was this aspect of Kane it, from me. I didn't even realize who was from me. The book was already out. The book had been published already. And I started to cry in the middle of the panel because I didn't realize that I felt that way and that it had expressed that through the character. So I think you're right I'm, about that. Yeah, I just had some regrets. I had some regrets about um, a couple breakups from my early 20s. I just didn't, I just wasn't, I, I was never mean. I was never like abusive or cruel or whatever intentionally, but but I, I like told myself some stories. Like as long as you're honest, as long as you say this, it's all good. And I just, I wish I had been more, sensitive I, I wish i had been more empathetic um to a couple um of the of the young women that i dated when i was 21 and 22 but i didn't yeah. realize that until i was on that panel and it's from that book so there was there, wow. was, a, there was a little bit of like self-punishment in writing that yeah. book um because i look back i'm like dude you should have just you should have said this in a different way and you yeah. should have taken more time to explain this and instead you didn't you told yourself that you'd explained yourself thoroughly and you didn't do that and you suck or at least you sucked at that age so yeah that that was really perceptive that you that you kind of i mean it's not all bad but at least some of the stuff that you're mentioning was was stuff that i'm not very proud of well on that note <laughs> <laughs> wow okay well bye everyone no, no. um we <laughs> we are actually at our like one hour mark that flame tree was talking about I want, oh my gosh, we got to talk about you. Let's talk about you. No more. way. You asked about me. I want to hear more about you, Sadie. Sadie, seriously. No way. I, I want to. I have to. So, like, can you answer at least a couple questions? Okay, you have two. Okay, two <laughs> questions. Um, the first thing is um, so you uh, have, it's really kind of wild because you have become this, this really important name in horror, this really respected name, deservedly so. Um, but it's like, how does that feel to you? Um, do you feel any different? Do you feel any weight of expectations? Do you feel any pressure? Um, or is it mostly positive? So from going from like 2018 to 2021, the, you know, obviously your popularity and growth and all that stuff is, is, is pretty pronounced. So how does that make you feel? Is that surreal? I'll shut up and let you answer. Um, part of it is just sort of like, I feel like I've, I've just kind of been riding along on a wave. Um, I'm just part of it. It's part of that rising tide brings all the boats. What, what is that quote? <laughs> Have you heard it? The rising tide. Yeah. Makes, I think you said all the boats. Yeah. yeah. So Mark Steesland said that to me like a long time ago. And I feel like it's a collaborative effort. Like, I'm sure that people look at what I'm doing on Twitter or on Instagram and feel like I just sort of like suck all the air out of the room or whatever. But honestly, I do feel like it, it's, a, it's collaborative effort. I mean, there's a lot of voices talking about horror and amplifying horror. Um, and I feel like I, I have like a platform that's been building for the last like five years. So it kind of started on Bookstagram. And I know it seems like I just kind of like landed in the middle of this whole thing and was just like, Ta -da! but <laughs> it was, it was more of like a gradual process yeah. for me. Um, you know, Scream and Cemetery Dance reached out to me through my bookstagram platform. That was before I was, you know, pretty active on Twitter. Um, and then my Twitter profile had been growing and now they're both kind of at the same amount. Um, Instagram and Twitter are both kind of like, 
the same. Um, although Stephen King is following my Twitter account, so that's weird. Um, that was just sort of like the pinnacle of the entire pandemic situation. Like I had just been able to visit my parents because we were all vaccinated and I was at my mom and dad's house in my hometown. And I was, my mom and I were laying on her bed. It was morning. Um, my dad was cooking us breakfast and I got up and I really quickly took a picture of my mom and dad, like their whole bookcase with all their Stephen King collection on it. And I tweeted it and was like hanging out with my parents, you know, first time since pandemic. And then we went back and we were goofing around and reading the newspaper and stuff and then brought us breakfast. I just happened to look at my Twitter and it said that he was following me. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, I kind of just stood there like not really moving for a second. And I kept staring at it and looking at it. And then I went to his profile because you know how it'll say like follows you in yeah. gray, yeah. like right next to their name. And it was there. And I was like, mom, <laughs> Stephen King just followed me on Twitter. And she immediately burst into tears. She was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it was the, that is, you talk about surreal to know that your childhood hero sees you. Yes. Is something I'll never get over. That's I will never get over it. The most never. amazing thing. I remember. I remember that. I remember that when that happened with you. It's the most amazing thing ever. Yeah, it, it has to be surreal. And I love that you're able to share that with your, your folks. That's so amazing. Yeah, you know what my dad said? So we told my dad, and he was like, he came in. He goes, I'll be right back. He leaves. He comes back into the room. He goes, I just wanted to see how many people he actually follows. And it's only like 120. So it's you and like Obama. <laughs> <laughs> He's like pretty much his family, Obama, you. <laughs> really? Seriously? I mean, that that's pretty select company, isn't it? That's pretty yeah, amazing. I just thought it was funny too that my dad was like, let's see how legit this is. If he follows like a billion people, not cool. If right. he follows like 110 people, okay, that's legit. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, that was that was amazing. I'm still just in awe of that and think that and it's also very deserved. Um, so I'm very happy about that for you. Thank you. Um, so, so yeah, this whole thing is fun. Yeah. Okay. So the other question I was going to ask you is, um, I know you. I mean, pretty well. We've we haven't met in person yet. Um, but you know, I know you online about as well as you can know somebody we've talked on the phone and I know you as this really super intelligent, super genuine, super caring, awesome human being. Um, what is it? Um, do you ever feel like, what would you like people to know about you? Like that maybe you don't know, you don't know if this trait or this characteristic, um, shows on Twitter. Um, maybe it doesn't show unless you meet you in real life like what do you what do you think people might not know about you um that you would like them to know hmm, that's a good question um well my husband and i have been married forever so i got married when i was like 19 ish going on 20. i didn't know that um, yeah we had two children really close like right after i was pregnant with my son um so then we had two kids, I have two adult children, and then we have our 16 year old. Um, so we did all of our like growing up and parenting like right out of the gate. Wow. Um, so all of this, I know it looks like when I'm online, I'm like reading and writing and doing all this stuff. And it's just this like not stopping kind of frenetic energy. Um, but that's because I didn't get to do anything for a really long time. I was right. a stay at home mom. I raised right. our kids. I did, went to all the practices. I had one son in football. One, my daughter was a cheerleader, spent all my time like on the field at the schools, doing parent teacher conferences, baking cupcakes, carving pumpkins, fucking dying <laughs> eggs. Like I did the whole nine yards. And then as they got older and more like self-sufficient, um, then I could really like start focusing on what I wanted to do and going to school and doing more writing and doing more reading. Um, so yeah, that's one thing. 
Also, my husband like totally walks me through a lot of anxiety. I have a lot of social anxiety, which you and I have talked about before, mm-hmm. our social anxieties. I have a lot of social anxiety, I have a lot of like just paranoia type stuff about phobias and spiders and heights and crowds. I mean, yeah. So as much as I am mother horror and read a lot of horror fiction, I also am scared of everything. (laughs) But I think that makes you like a a better, I don't know, that informs you more, right? I mean, I think that if you weren't afraid of anything or if you were afraid of very few things, I think it would be a less visceral experience. But I think because of the anxiety, not that that's fun, but because of these things you're talking about, I really feel like you might experience it in a deeper way than yeah. someone without those things might. Let me ask you this. I know I said two things, but you brought up the kids. How do your kids feel about the 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 platform of mother profile of, her, of mother of mother horror of her profile rising and, and growing? And like you said, it wasn't it wasn't instantaneous. It's been this kind of incremental slow growth, very very steady growth because of your hard work uh, and skill. But how do your kids feel about this? Do they see you as that in that way at all? Or yeah, so like none of my kids read really. Um, they read graphic novels. Like my son is going through the walking dead, uh, graphic novels and my daughter reads graphic novels too. Um, my oldest son is probably like, I don't really, I tell him when like somebody really important, like followed me or like, you know, just, I give him updates every now and then. And, and we go to movies a lot together and have like other bonding things. But my daughter is like so adorably proud of me. Like she tells all of her friends, she works at a grocery store. So like when I walk in there, she takes me all around to meet all of her new coworkers. Like one guy like interviewed me about Stephen King books for like 10 minutes while I was standing in the grocery store. Wow. He's in his twenties and it's so, you guys, it's so cute to meet like 20 somethings who who are starting Stephen King stuff for the first time. Oh, it's the best. So cool. It's the best. So I talked to him about Stephen King. Um, she tells all of her friends to follow me. Like she is so so proud. Like she's really adorable about it. And then the 16 year old's in the house, so he hears me talking about stuff all the time. And he actually gives me a lot of like internet advice, like doing the TikToks and yeah. managing social media and like boundaries and all kinds of stuff. Because kids are hip on that stuff. Oh, they really are. And I, it, it doesn't it feel, I mean, I'm, this is self-evident, but I tell you, I would rather, like if my kids and wife, if they feel, if they're proud of me and and, and all that stuff, that means more. I yeah. mean, obviously everybody, mean, you know, you mean a lot to me and then, and then my friends mean a lot to me. But like, if you've got that, that's so validating. Yeah. That is so deeply moving um, when they feel that way, when they're proud of you. I mean, just as we're proud of them, obviously, but when they're proud of you, that it's just an indescribably buoying feeling. It just feels so wonderful. So yeah. I think it's so cool that she did that and does that and takes you around and introduces you. She's proud of mom. Yeah. I mean, that's like that, honestly, the Stephen King Twitter thing is cool. That's actually probably a step above that. Yeah, no, it's really cool. And I mean, big shout out to my husband too, because you know, when you have a partner that's supportive of this crazy world that we live in with the horror community and all the stuff that we do and the events we want to go to and doing stuff like this on a Saturday, um, you know, all the time that it takes up to write articles. And I'm up at four o'clock in the morning, like jump on my laptop, start doing stuff like right out of the gate. Um, And so having somebody in your corner, no matter what, supporting you, it's invaluable. Yes, it is. It absolutely is. Yeah, I know you talk a lot about being a family man and really focusing on that and trying to make sure that, you know, and Brian King talks about it, too, just like putting family first. Yeah, yeah. Brian's such a good he's such a good mentor for me. Um, Yeah. And that's what uh, Joe Joe Lansdale too. Brian talks about that all the time. Joe. And, you know, you could there are people who are perfectly happy and perfectly amazing who are on their own or who who just have, you know, um, a significant other, whatever it is. I mean, there are a billion ways to be happy and a billion ways to to find fulfillment. But um, I I remember Joe was uh, in one of our phone calls and, and Brian has had similar conversations, but Joe said something like, you know, because he was talking about in the 80s when he was kind of blowing up 
and he was like, you know, I knew I knew these guys. They got into the this this wild lifestyle, and they they had to have all kinds of women. He said, you know, I I've always just loved my wife. Oh. I've, I've always, and I'm like, dude, yeah. this guy this guy gets it. You know, he totally yeah. gets it. And I think that's just it. I mean, I think that you know, what, it, no matter what happens. I think that you've got to focus on those people in your life. And that's that's what's true. That's what because who cares? Like I could publish so many things or I could win this award or have this deal or that deal. None of it matters at all. Like none of it would matter at all if I'm not taking care of what really matters. So, yeah. yeah. Anyway, boy, that was sound, like, fist bump. <laughs> I sounded so much like a platitude, but I swear it's true. Well, I really think that this was like such a fun time. I'm like so excited about like the pinnacle of spooky season is tomorrow. Like we get to celebrate our Halloween gods. <laughs> yes. That was perfect. perfect. Yeah, it's amazing. So I really just want to like thank Flame Tree for having us here. I don't know if they were going to jump back in or not. Um, I know they can hear us. So were you guys going to jump in or is this like curtain time? <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, I was going to thank you. Thank you. You've been reading my work lately and not just my published work, but you've been reading some of my other stuff and like Halloween gods you were talking about, Marla. Thank you so much. You were like, yeah, such, it's so you're like an ideal reader, like honestly, because like you get it and like you come up with this stuff and I'm like, oh my gosh. What would I have? How would this book be without that? So thank you for all your. Yeah, questions. no, it's my pleasure. Like I just told actually CS Humble the other day, like I go into my books wanting to fall in love. I think that there are critics and reviewers and horror fans who don't go in wanting to fall in love. They want the book to impress them. And mm. I go at it the other way. I'm already there. You have to lose me somewhere along the way. <laughs> well, yeah, and I think that's just who you are. You you have a very generous spirit, and it's very clear. Like when you don't like a book, it's it's there's nothing malicious. I mean, and you don't always give positive reviews, but when you give a negative review, I it just it's not like you're wetting your knives. It's not like you're Anton Ego and Ratatouille, just just <laughs> relishing the crushing of this spirit, right? Yeah. And, and I think that shows. I think your character shows in your reviews and, and all the stuff. It's like you truly have this this desire to enjoy it, and it, sometimes it falls short, sometimes it doesn't. But I think that's a really good place to be you know to start off with at least i think that's really cool yeah that's where i'm at because the book is always better yes <laughs> and we'll end that on shirt. that <laughs> i love the shirt yes that is perfect yeah the book is always better so <laughs> thank you to everyone who showed up for this um you know go celebrate eat some fun size candy throw the candy corn in the trash and watch some horror movies yeah yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah, it was so fun hanging out with you. It's always fun hanging out with you, Sadie. So thank you so much, my friend. Yeah, my pleasure. All right, bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Peace.